the expression, someone wants to have their cake and eat it too. Politically here, it seems that's what Netanyahu wants to do. He wants to eat the support from the smaller parties that could give him the majority coalition that he needs. But if he does, if he eats too much of those parties, they won't cross the threshold. They won't make it in. Is the gamble worth it, do you think? Uh, why is he doing it? I think it's a huge risk, and I think that Netanyahu doesn't know or doesn't have better information that we have here in the, in the studio. So he looks at the same polls, and he thinks that it's better to risk and go and try to become the biggest uh, party, or at least uh, the narrow the, the gap between uh, Blue and White and the Likud. But yes, he's putting in danger several parties, as was mentioned. I think that he's overdoing it, but you know, t tomorrow evening we'll say either he's a genius again, the number one campaign campaigner ever, or he made a mistake. Uh, it's a similar strategy to what he did exactly four years ago, and he won that race. I mean, at the yeah. last minute, get out the vote. That's correct. But I think that if you look at the numbers, still mathematically, Netanyahu has better chances to form the next uh, coalition. And if uh, uh, the right wing small parties will adhere to Netanyahu and will keep their uh, uh, promise or their uh, values and stay with Netanyahu, so most likely he'll be able to form the next government. So I think that Netanyahu is a bit overdoing it, and you know, he pops up all over, says the same things again and again and again. But he, he's looking at the media, he's also blaming the media, Yariv, in a sense. He's saying that the media is trying to put asleep some potentially could voters by giving these projections that it's a, it's a safe 61 seat for Netanyahu, for the he's right wing bloc. He succeeds to manipulate the situation all the time. When he is being uh, look like uh, the one that is going to lose, so he's saying the media is biased and they are helping the other side. When the media is saying you are definitely going to win, again, he's the, the poor guy that everyone against him. And this uh, feeling of being well, he said a that victim. He it didn't work for the media last time in 2015. You know, and yeah. this time around, they'll but change the tactics. You know, he's playing with the situation all the time in order to create the feeling among his supporters that they are the victim, they are the weakest, and they are fighting this elite with the media and the Supreme Court and everyone. And this is very effective oh. because we know that the people are enthusiastic about it. I have to say that I wish Netanyahu a good luck with this campaign because if he will be too successful with this campaign, he might lose two or three small parties. No and if Netanyahu will not have 61, meaning Gantz and the Arabs will have 61 in the Knesset, Netanyahu cannot be prime minister, definitely not for all the, the, the four years. So that, you, on that point, Yariv, I mean, you mentioned the, the path to 61. In Israel, that's the magic number. You need at least 61. That's the majority. The, the, the question for Netanyahu, he has a high-risk, high-reward strategy, but he has a clear path to 61. I don't understand, based on the polls, what is the path to 61? I mean, based on the polls, merits, the party that you're running for, maybe, according to the polls, five, six seats. You have labor at nine, ten seats. And then what? How does Benny Gantz and his blue and white get to 61? Yeah, 54. 54. 54. 54. That's not enough. First of all, if Gantz will have 61 people, that have, uh, members of Knesset, that are not going to vote in favor of Netanyahu, meaning blue and white, labor, merits, and the Arab will be 61, then we, uh, Benny Gantz will be the next prime minister. If there will not be a 61 uh, seats left of Netanyahu, then it's a play of the, 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 the bigger party and the, and, the, and the energy that is going to happen, the momentum that will happen later. Because there is a chance that maybe Kahlon, maybe Zehut, maybe the orthodox, ultra orthodox religious will go to Gantz party, but in order to do that, Gantz need to be very, very big over Netanyahu. I think that because Netanyahu is going all the way to gain votes for the Likud, I don't see this gap going to happen, and then it will be much more problematic unless there will be 61 for Gantz, and for that, the smaller party in the right need to uh, not not to make it to the Knesset. Do you find this a realistic scenario in which uh, Kahlon, Moshe Feiglin, they do not sit with Netanyahu? It's hard for me to believe because they're thinking about the day after. And if you cross the lines and you go from right to left, and you can do it vice versa, from left to right, then you lose your constituency. And in that case, you won't be able to be re-elected. So it's hard for me to believe. Uh, most likely, if uh, such scenario as was described uh, by Yariv will happen, will go for a unity government and then it'd be very interesting to see how come a, a guy that is facing indictment and charges and, and, and potential jail will, will do will sit together when, with his rivals so, and I think that the, ma the main problem in the campaign from the left especially from the blue and white center left that was a more anti-BB and less substance and that's why we have this situation. I